week. We'll have details on these stories and more, plus the exclusive four-day forecast after ABC News on the Hour. It's 7 o'clock. From ABC News, I'm Joe Templeton. The big question at the Kennedy Space Center this morning is will the shuttle Columbia and its five-member crew be up and away today on its scheduled 10-day mission? The countdown's been going smoothly, no problems there. But the weather is a growing problem. ABC's Vic Ratner is at the Kennedy Space Center. As dawn breaks here at the Kennedy Space Center, the brilliant spotlights which have lit Columbia all night are being turned off, and minutes ago, the hatch closed on the shuttle cabin with the three men and two women astronauts all set to go inside. The countdown has been smooth, but the weather is still no go. Officially, the odds are 90% against acceptable launch weather this morning. Thick clouds blanket the sky in front of me, and gusty winds are near the limits allowed for a possible emergency landing. If the shuttle does not go today, they'll try again probably tomorrow morning. Vic Ratner, ABC News at the Kennedy Space Center. And once the mission gets underway, the crew has two major assignments to launch a Navy satellite and retrieve a science satellite. This is to be the first of ten shuttle missions this year. More news after this. Radio Shack's Red Tag Sale. It's amazing. Save on hundreds of specially priced Red Tag items, including Hi-Fi stereo equipment, 30 to 69 percent off. Radios and auto sound, 24 to 81 percent off. TVs and VCRs, 32 to 50 percent off. Telephones and telephone accessories, 25 to 91 percent off. Radio Shack's Red Tag Sale. It's amazing. AM FM stereo cassette portables and cassette players, 25 to 64 percent off. PC compatible software, 22 to 86 percent off. Electronic toys and games, 25 to 50 percent. Off. Radio Shack's Red Tag Sale. It's amazing. Plus, Radio Shack has other fantastic January bargains. Like a voice-activated cassette recorder, now $29.95, save $40. Deluxe stereo headphones, regular $29.95, now $19.95, save 33%. And take 44% off a three-pack of VHS videotape, now just $9.99. Product availability may vary, but all stores have great bargains. So hurry in now for the best selection at participating stores and dealers. Radio Shack's Red Tag Sale. It's amazing. The National League of Cities released a new study this morning which shows that fewer than 10% of the nation's cities report making any headway in the war on drugs. City officials say the drug problem continues to be their number one problem. Most city officials also give the federal government poor marks in dealing with the drug problem. President Alfredo Cristiani said in a nationwide broadcast last night that members of his military are to blame for the murder of eight people last November. Six Jesuit priests were among the victims in the attack on their residence in San Salvador. Cristiani called the killings abominable, but did not specify which military men were responsible. The presses of Panama's main opposition newspaper, La Prensa, are rolling again this morning. More from ABC's Joan Kirkwood in Panama City. The outspoken Panamanian newspaper, La Prensa, was shut down by General Manuel Noriega in February 1988. His army destroyed the printing presses, and the pro-Noriega assembly called the director, Robert Eisenman, a traitor to the nation. But with Noriega safely behind bars in the U.S., La Prensa is opening again. Eisenman is back from exile, and he says his newspaper will continue to be independent and critical. But he says the job will be easier since La Prensa's supporters, the former opposition, are now the government. Joan Kirkwood, ABC News, Panama City. Jury selection is to begin today in the trial of a former Cornell University graduate student charged with disabling defense computers with a computer virus in 1988. Robert Morris Jr. is the son of one of the government's top computer experts. This virus shut down about, about 6,000 computers nationwide. A lower capital gains tax rate may go into effect this year. A report in the New York Times says administration and congressional officials are almost certain Congress will go along with President Bush and enact the lower capital gains tax in 1990. Though New York State lottery officials may not be able to verify Charlie Taylor's claim after all. Today's Daily News says the cosmetician who claims to be the winner of a $35 million jackpot is a fraud. The newspaper says she held a so-called celebration party last night with the help of a prankster who, among other things, has taught a class on practical jokes. This is ABC News. WPTF News Time, four and a half minutes after seven o'clock. Good morning. 
I'm David Sherrill. A hero's welcome awaits a large group of Fort Bragg soldiers today at Pope Air Force Base, returning from the Panamanian invasion. WPTF's Charles Lambeth has the story. Family members and some commanding officers will be on hand today when the first large contingent of soldiers from Fort Bragg returns from duty in Panama. Returning will be troops from the 82nd Airborne who seized a dam and an enemy supply depot. The unit returning is the 3rd Battalion of the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment, consisting of nearly 700 soldiers. The soldiers Soldiers will be walking off transport planes rather than parachuting onto base. The 3rd Battalion seized Maiden Dam, which supplies most of the electrical power to U.S. installations in the area. In all, nearly 4,000 Bragg soldiers were sent to the Central American country. It is not known when the other 3,000-plus fighters will be returning. Charles Lambeth, WPTF News. WPTF's Bob Ellison will be reporting live today from Pope Air Force Base as those troops set foot once again on Tar Heel soil. Congressman Martin Lancaster has added his name to the list of those outraged about the recent surge in the price of diesel fuel and home heating oil. Lancaster has mailed a letter to U.S. Attorney General Dick Thornburg asking that action be taken to bring down the prices and keep them down after prices jumped more than 50 percent for some consumers in recent months. Representatives of the fuel oil industry, meantime, are expected to discuss the situation before the State Utilities Commission when it meets in Raleigh this morning. WPTF News Time, six minutes after 7 o'clock. Let's go now to Dave Clark for a checkup on metro traffic conditions this morning. Dave? We're out on the Raleigh Bell Line, at least from the north side, not seeing any problems or any slowdowns. Traffic moving very well despite the rain and wet pavement. Uh, currently 64, looks like about normal coming in from Nightdale, crossing the Belt Line, headed in New Bern Avenue to the downtown. Capitol Boulevard looks about uh, par for the course also, all the way into the downtown from the mini city. With the WPTF Metro Traffic, I'm Dave Clark. Thank you, Dave. Six and a half past seven. I'll have more news after this. Ralph Emery here with Reba McIntyre. Reba, your schedule never seems to let up. <laughs> Look who's talking. I'll take my schedule over yours any day. Well, neither one of us wants to slow down just for a headache. Well, Ralph, that's why I always take plenty of goodies headache powders out on tour. And I keep plenty of goodies around the studio. Well, when you work for a living, you learn to count on goodies. Use as directed. Goodies headache powders and extra strength tablets. Seven minutes after seven at WPTF, a fatal plane crash yesterday in Montgomery County. James Franklin McIntyre, Route 2 Troy, uh, went to a uh, uh, private airstrip in the county. And uh, he took off in his plane after he warmed it up about 10 minutes. And uh, he uh, stayed in the air probably uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes before he had engine failure. Detective Timothy Jordan with the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department says McIntyre was pronounced dead at the scene. The FAA will be investigating this morning. McIntyre's plane was a homemade one-seater. The fire that consumed a Chapel Hill house last week has now claimed the life of a little girl that was inside at the time. Two-year-old Tiffany Wade died over the weekend at Memorial Hospital of severe burns she received in the fire on Wednesday. Investigators think Tiffany may have inadvertently caused that fire. A disposable lighter was found near the child's body. A Red Cross appeal for blood brought donors out in droves in the Charlotte area over the weekend, but the Carolinas Division says the shortage is far from over. Red Cross officials say blood supplies are about one-third below the level needed to meet demand. Some non-emergency surgery had to be postponed this weekend at some hospitals due to the shortage. Blood service officials say their biggest need right now is for type O blood. Well, the snow is long gone, but the state is still feeling the effects of a pre-Christmas snowstorm. About 60 state transportation employees were dispatched to help plow roads and spread salt during the three-day storm that began December 22nd. The state says it was one of the largest cleanup efforts ever, costing an estimated $3 million. State troopers say four people have been killed in traffic accidents around the state this weekend, bringing the death toll for the year to 24. Meantime, funeral services are, be, are to be held today in Lee County for a woman and three of her daughters killed last week near Sanford when their car was thrown into the path of a tractor-trailer rig. The driver of another vehicle has been charged in the case. WPTF News Time now, nine minutes after 7 o'clock. The four-day forecast calling for the rainy skies that have been with us most of the weekend to be tapering off by this afternoon. We're looking for a high of 45 degrees today. Tonight should be partly cloudy with a low of 35. Mostly sunny conditions for tomorrow. Look for a high of 55 degrees. Clear and cool tomorrow night down to 34. For Wednesday, some clouds, a high of 60. Thursday looks to be a pleasant spring-like day, mostly sunny weather and mild with a high near 60 degrees on Thursday. 
Right now we've got 45 degrees in the triangle. From the triangle source for news and information, I'm David Sherrill, WDPTF Radio News. All right. Thank you, David. We'll talk to the weatherman, John Boyle, in a moment or so. It's 10 minutes after 7. WPTF Sports Time with Gary Dornberg. Good morning, everybody. In the NFL yesterday, the L.A. Rams defeated the New York Giants 19-13 in overtime and Denver down Pittsburgh 24-23. So next Sunday, AFC Championship game Cleveland will be at Denver. NFC Championship game the L.A. Rams will be at San Francisco. Joe Robbie, the owner and founder of the Miami Dolphins, is dead. He died yesterday at the age of 73. University of Kentucky could officially name Bill Curry their new football coach today. And in uh, basketball, Louisville outscored UCLA. Oregon State got by California. Women's basketball, North Carolina State defeated Maryland. NBA, the L.A. Lakers over Miami. New Jersey down Atlanta. New York Knicks defeated the L.A. Clippers in overtime. In the NHL, the winners were Calgary, Boston, and Montreal. Sports line tonight at 7 o'clock right here on WPTF. All right, right here on WPTF, it is time for us to talk about the weather with meteorologist John Boyle, brought to you this morning by Pioneer Awning and Window Company. Singing in the rain may sound romantic, but it's no fun getting in and out of your car and getting soaked. If you don't already have a carport, why not look into one of Pioneer Awning and Window Company's affordable aluminum carports? Not only will you stay out of the rain, you'll protect that shine and sparkle on your car so your car won't depreciate faster than it should. You also won't be late for work on a chilly morning because you had to scrape the frost off the windshield. Pioneer has many types of outdoor enclosures you'll want to look into. Turn your porch or patio into an area you can enjoy year-round. Pioneer is the professional in this field, offering over 30 years trusted experience and quality craftsmanship. Give them a call at 828-4405 for a free estimate. Whatever the weather, trust Pioneer for custom quality, custom comfort. See Pioneer Awning and Window Company at 2840 South Wilmington Street. Okay, first thing we want to know, John Boyle, what was the high yesterday and the low this morning? Well, the high temperature yesterday, not all that warm. 48 degrees and the low temperature this morning, 41. Okay, our weather maker is what? Uh, we do have a low pressure system. It's now over coastal sections of Georgia moving up towards the region right up along the coastline, and that's causing the rain around the area this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, we expect to see that taper off. What, what are the current conditions at the Raleigh-Durham airport? Uh, right now we have cloudy skies, a visibility only a mile and a half with light rain and fog, a temperature 42, dew point right near that at 41. Winds are from the east-northeast about 7 miles per hour. Okay. So we do have the light rain falling across the region. It looks like it will continue during the day today. The weather word, weather story, rain and fog. Rain could be heavy at times this morning, but uh, all the precipitation should be tapering off by this afternoon. Okay, before we get to the four-day forecast, can you uh, give us a wrap-up of the travel points again, if you don't mind? Okay, and taking a look at the travel points, uh, Asheville will have uh, light rain ending today. High temperature, 45 degrees. Uh, Wilmington uh, could have a few heavier th showers, maybe even a thunder shower today. High temperature, 53. Atlanta, Georgia, partly cloudy, 50 for the high. Washington, D.C. will see some rain showers, 40 for the high. New York City clouding up, 40 degrees. Los Angeles, California, mostly sunny, high temperature of 70. And if you're lucky enough to be going down to Orlando and Disney World, not a great day, mostly cloudy with showers likely, the high temperature 75 degrees. Would twer that I were, boy, going to Disney World. <laughs> we might be doing that, though, uh, coming up in May. It's still kind of on the back burner right now. Uh, what is our four-day forecast then, John? Well, our four-day forecast, once we get through this morning, looking pretty good. Rain and fog for this morning again. The rain heavy at times, tapering off this afternoon. 45 to 50 degrees this afternoon. As the storm pulls away from our area, skies will be clearing out during the overnight with the low temperatures in the middle 30s by morning. Tuesday, mostly sunny. High temperature 55 degrees in the afternoon. Nice day for outdoor activities. Tuesday night, clear and cool. Lows in the mid 30s. A few clouds around on Wednesday. High temperatures near 60. And Thursday, mostly sunny again. A high temperatures near 60. So we're going to be going the other way with above normal temperatures for midweek. I love it, John. I'll talk to you at 8 o'clock. Okay. Thanks. John Boyle with us this morning on WPTF Radio here at 14 after 7. It is 45 degrees. From AM Stereo 680, it's the Great Morning Wake Up with Mario Dell. WPTF. 
WPTF. It's 14 and a half minutes after 7 o'clock. WPTF. Let's get old smarty pants in here. The man's got a full pocket. Been up there into Atlantic City, New yeah. Jersey, walking out. A halfway I, I heard trip. you talking about going out to, uh, going out wandering on the boardwalk and all that in the That's early right. days. That's it. This boardwalk has changed uh, some, hasn't it, because oh, yeah. of the... All the casinos rebuilding with the casinos. Yeah, everything. well, it's still there, though, and it still still is nice. You still have to fight. Was it the... nice before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone told me it had gotten it had gotten a little seedy. I, I'm, I'm all I really am working if out of ignorance you, here because I had not I have not been to it. If you Atlantic stay City. in and around the casino mm -hmm. area itself, no, it's no, I'm nice. talking about before the casinos were built. Before, yes, it had it had uh, deteriorated. Now okay. it seems to be in pretty good shape. Good. Uh, you have to fight the gulls off in order to get a seat someplace. Oh, really? Not, yeah, a lot of gulls. Ugh. People people tend to feed them, of course, and so oh, they wait. they group by the thousands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All over you. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't feed them, then they let you know. And it's like the guy at the aviary in Washington at the zoo there, you know, where you walk in. Yeah. Some guy on the subway said, you must visit. You've got to go in there. I said, I didn't bring an umbrella nor a raincoat That's and right. a hat. So forget well, that. I don't like Green. birds anyway. Yeah, you get me in there. that thing. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah. it's fun. It's you had nice. fun, did you? Yeah, we stayed outside Atlantic City. We didn't stay on the Strip. Uh, stayed at uh, Seaview, Marriott Seaview, which is another golf resort. Where it makes two golf resorts that I've stayed at here in the last week. We're in, in Tucson. And you don't own any clubs. That's right. Do I don't own any clubs don't play, but uh, yeah, I'm going to try to take it up. Yeah, sure you will. Yeah, why not? You've been saying that for a year and a half now. No, I've been saying you that can since reach, the... You can reach around now. I mean, you have plenty of room to swing the club now I'm before. Trying. I'm trying. You can only get a quarter swing. Now you can get a full swat at it. I can get at least 30 cents worth. <laughs> 30 cents worth, eh? Instead of a quarter. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> this man died in Arcetri, Arcetri, Italy in 1642. He's very famous. And Italy, uh, Galileo. Galileo. Okay. Galileo, the astronomer. Let's see what else happened. Galileo Galilei. That's very correct. In 1815, U.S. forces led by this general defeated the British. The closing engagement of the War of 1812. That should be easy for you. Okay, well, I would assume that this is the Battle of New Orleans and right. Andy Jackson. That's right. General Andrew Jackson. Yeah. He was toughy. Yeah, old hickory. Okay. Later would become president, would serve from 1829 to 1837. Go ahead, I'm just killing time. No, no, there. that's all right. I, I, this struck me. In 1979, 50 people died when the French supertanker Betelgeuse exploded as it was discharging crude oil at the Gulf Oil Terminal in Ireland's Bantry Bay. And it's spelled B-E-T-E-L-G-E-U-S-E, -E -E, Betelgeuse is as, the pronunciation. That's the star, Betelgeuse. And I guess it's something uh, else, too. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's you remember the movie Michael movie, yeah. Caine? It was uh, Michael Caine, Michael Keaton, uh, Beetlejuice. Yes, but that was the that's Beetlejuice. Yeah, it was, yeah. was a takeoff of Beetlejuice. Yeah, right, right. Okay. That's why I think it struck me. Today is Elvis Presley's birthday. Okay, 1935. Uh, he would have been uh, 54. 54 years old. No, 55. 55 years old. Yeah, 55. I forgot I can't add. Rock and roll legend Elvis Presley, born in Tupelo, Mississippi. The devil is easy to identify. He appears when you're terribly tired, makes a very reasonable request when you know you should, which you know you should not grant. <laughs> Who said that? Fiorello LaGuardia. Ah. Mayor of New York. Often okay. tired. Yeah. Was he often tired? Often tired. Often in trouble. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I've, let, me, let me do this real quick, and then I've got something else I want to bring. The devil was often on his doorstep. Yeah, You're knocking, a little guy. Yes. Like, 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 like to read the comics. Well, the devil could get to him because he was Remember the they comics? Were close. Oh, yeah, he read the comics. Fiorello read the, read the comics during the strike. Right. Uh, Wake County buses that are late, 738 to Wake Forest, Rollsville, and uh, Brassfield Elementary, 30 minutes behind. Number 611 headed to Rollsville Elementary and Wake Forest Elementary, an hour late. Number 623 going to Wake Forest High School and Rollsville Elementary, an hour late. Must be Monday. Number 394 to Wake Forest High School and Fox Road Elementary, an hour behind. And, whoa, we get a departure here. 1812 to Farmington Woods, Briarcliff, and North Norwood Elementaries, running about an hour and a half late.
Oh, I, I wonder if they there a pool hall on this. I on this thought. Route I thought when you said <laughs> a departure from the norm that you had a bus that was running. Uh, bus number seventeen six two dash four is, on is time. running three hours early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got up early. Your kid should have been at school three hours ago now. That's it. When you get there, you'll have grilled cheese, cereal, fresh fruit, and milk for lunch. Hamburger deluxe or chef salad, potato rounds, apple and milk. Durham County Students' Choice for breakfast. For lunch today, chili con carne pizza, broccoli, pineapple, and cornbread. For Durham City, a cereal, sausage biscuit, eggs, cheese, uh, cheese toast, that is, juice, fruit. And for lunch, cheesy macaroni with sausage biscuit or a hamburger. A blend of vegetables, a mixed fruit cup in Johnston County. Juice or fruit, grits, toast with jelly, cereal. For lunch, hamburger or smoked sausage with macaroni and cheese. Fries, pineapple, and milk. And those are all of the menus. They've, uh, there's a guy who's coming out. Remember the Avanti? Yes, the car. A yeah. new one's coming out. A new Avanti? A new Avanti. It's another new luxury car. Wealthy real estate developer John Joseph J.J. Cafaro is launching the $48,000 Avanti. He bought the troubled Avanti car company in 1988 and is showing off a four-door model at the Los Angeles Auto Show this week. It goes on sale in two weeks at 55 Avanti dealers. Avantis feature hand-stitched leather interiors and power everything. I that hope, was a beautiful automobile. I hope this has better success than the DeLorean. Yeah, I do, too. The Avanti is, uh, was originally designed by Studebaker. Yeah, that was the so. Studebaker oh, yeah. car. Yeah, Studebaker sports car. Right, and a good one, too, boy. I'll tell you, if you, had, if you get a hold of one of those today, you have gotten, you've got a really good investment and a good automobile, too. Studebaker made a good car. Avanti! Avanti, it sounds good. You notice his name ends with a vowel. Yes. And so does Avanti. Anybody's name can end with a, in, in a vowel know, if you want to. Cafaro, Avanti. That's it. Da, 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 da. 21 after 7. I'd rather be called the Cafaro. <laughs> a Carfaro. Where are you going, honey? Out to get my Cafaro. Carfaro. 21 like almost. backfire. Cafaro. 22 minutes after 7. <laughs> Back in a minute with traffic. Something special in the air. 